question is also if you're going to have the time to read the reviews. Before the exam, yes, I will not, right? But the point for the reviews was not really for me to reading it before the exam. I mean, one of the reasons is, but the other one is to, for you to get feedback as well, right? So if we don't have this final round of reviews, okay, you will have no feedback because then you have no review, right? Um, so it would, be, it would be possible if we delay the exam in a week, then it would be possible to make a round or just, a, the, or just, just some, some comments on the, on the reviews. But, but then it's uh, already two days earlier uh, uh, submission for yep. the last round. It's only five days. So that's, that's my biggest concern. Yeah, I, I, I see the timing is a bit unfortunate, right? So what we could do... Um, um, we can postpone the, the writing. So we can postpone the deadline for the reviews after the exam. So you can do that after the exam. What do you think? Uh, how long after? Week? Like how much time you need? Oh, uh, it's, it's just like this. That, uh... I understand that, yeah, the deadline on Sunday with exam on Monday is kind of not ideal, right? It's actually wrong. Uh, because, yeah, you're focusing on something that is not contributing directly. I mean, it is contributing to the exam, but not fully. Very, 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 it's very, very, very narrow, so. narrowly, yeah. So it's better to spend that week actually going over everything and then do the reviews after. Uh, we could drop the reviews. We could... Um, because you finished with the essays, right? Today. Yeah, no, so Today is the deadline. Like so you will have a week for preparing for the exam. Oh, five days. Yeah. Um, so how, how many of you would like to get feedback on the last essay from others? Come on, you all would like to, but you don't like to write it, right? So. <laughs> I, think it's, uh, I think it's actually quite, uh, quite interesting, the, the, the topic I choose, and I... Yeah. Um, this is another part that I use some few more articles than it was listed on the, on the page, because it, they were not enough relevant mm -hmm. for that, so I don't know uh, all those uh, additional sort of resources. Uh, yeah. Are they coming? automatically to the, to the pencil or not? Yeah, they, they kind of, not directly, but indirectly they do, yeah. yeah because then, then it's not known, other people that don't have a possibility to read it yeah. if you don't review it. That's right. And I didn't post those, those articles, but uh, on the, on the, because I didn't want to adjust this course topics list. Mm -hmm. it was, it was so how many exams do you have? You have the, the some of you have games, some of you have the mobile. What else? I have the color exam. Color exam. That probably is quite heavy. <laughs> uh, what else do you have? As for me, I need to, to do the integration project. Yeah. I hope not from the beginning. Yeah, because of the integration project, I am not a fan of delaying. Yes, so I, because the way the courses are structured now, after the games exam on Wednesday next week, mm -hmm. there isn't anything else other than integration project. And, and I don't want to change it to suddenly have the review. Yeah, when, so when do you have a deadline for the integration project? 31st. Okay. So you have a month dedicated yeah. to the project work. Um, uh, anyway, if, if you are planning to, to delay the, 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 the submission for the review, then I'm going to write anyway as the first uh, subject to do it to do it and then take an exam anyway. Yeah. Uh, we just have to feed it before exam anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it, for me for me it doesn't matter if it's this Sunday or next Sunday. Yeah. Then I will I have to do it at once to be to be to be done with the with the, with the course on the Monday on the exam. Yeah. I don't have actually uh, resources to, to, to put for it or after it, and I didn't plan it in a, in a schedule yeah, for I the see. next month. So, um, so how, how many? Yeah, I mean, um, 
what do you think? Like, who is for dropping the final review? <laughs> so I guess majority is um, here. here. Yeah. Well, the only one not here, I think. Is Marcus? Is Marcus? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I couldn't start, if, if it was possible, like make a review for something that was delivered last week, like it start a reviewing earlier. Earlier, yeah, I know. I have to wait until everybody's posted, and I, right. I could read. And you can only start today, right? Yes, so, so yeah. I couldn't could, could start it before. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it depends on uh, on the exam. Maybe it uh, uh, it depends on. We haven't discussed the, the form of the exam. Uh, so maybe it's let's, anyway. Okay, so what, what I'm proposing is uh, let's use part of this week instead of writing a full review of somebody else's paper and doing extra research, uh, add a paragraph to your own essay, which is a self-review of your review of, of your essay, right? So it'll be like a self-reflection on what you've done and how would you improve it and how would you criticize it. Right? It will be easier for you to do because you don't have to research the area because you've already researched the area for your own essay. Right? That will take, you know. Uh, and I like this idea also because we didn't have the self criticism no. before on the, on the That's right. papers, only, only finding That's the right. holes in uh, some other sales arguments. So, so now it will be nice also for the, for the bachelor fellow master thesis. To, to, to exactly, and you uh, need that. Points. You you need to be able to do the self-reflection on uh, that project, then right? I, then I like it too, so, um, so let's do that instead of the full uh, third review, and just yeah, I, I will not start marking the essays yet. Um, I don't know what deadline you want, Thursday or something. Um, so we we just spend extra, you know, time on doing that instead of doing a full review, and then there will be no third review. And just post it on the uh, Discord in yep. case uh, yes, Marius yeah. has started with the review of <laughs> somebody else's work. Yeah. Uh, Exclusive teams are until Thursday, so yeah. And then I I wouldn't think it would start already. Yes, but you know, you know <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a it's a it's a scheduling. So like I know, yeah. It, so it, it, so it, I, I did yeah, I mean the exclusive teams so so Thursday. Yes, but. But it was like this that I did uh, the experience scene before, so I kind of ready with my part of the report already during the weekend. Yeah, I so don't, I don't I have much on it left, but I will work on it yeah. today. Yeah, so what I will do is I will um, change the deadline. Um, so Sunday was May 5th, Saturday, so May 3rd, so Friday. I think it's okay if you have time to, yeah. to, to, to evaluate and give a feedback uh, during the exam if it's something you're missing or exactly. something is slipping up. Yeah. Like uh, in what time of Friday? Like, <laughs> 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 like, uh, if it's like really early, then I had to work from Thursday and Thursday. It's busy because of experts and teams? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, late, late Friday. Friday night? Yeah, Friday night. <laughs> Now I began to trade. <laughs> oh, uh, so sorry. I like the idea of self criticism. In this one. Okay, so I've um, I've added the note that the third essay self-review deadline is on Friday night, and then everybody will have the weekend to read those essays uh, before the exam. There will be just one essay left for the weekend if you did yeah, work yes. for the exam this week, <laughs> right? Um, and we will have the. Um, yeah, exams happening on Monday, and on the same wiki page below is the list of topics which I have uh, came up with. 
So the um, exam will be composed of kind of a two parts. One is uh, related to the writing and to the essays. So a little bit of a feedback on the structures and on the essays themselves. But we've done covered most of it in the course. Uh, the second part is kind of a generic about the various research areas that we covered in the course. And we did cover quite a lot. Um, so obviously I cannot ask you everything. So we will probably run the exam in a similar fashion to some of the uh, um, some of the formats that we've used for serious games and for uh, some of the exams with Simon, where I tell you, do you want AI or blockchain? And then you pick one, and then I will ask you questions from that domain, right? So we might have um, six or seven different domains out of which you will be probably asked two or three. Uh, and some of the ones which you um, not know, you may be able to avoid, right? But you don't know which choices I will give you. So it, if, if, if there are four choices and you learned two, and I give you these two, which are bad ones, you will have to pick one bad one, right? So you have 50% chance of uh, like you, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So to maximize, yeah, kind of try to learn more than just half. <laughs> okay, but uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, to, let me see if uh, we're not here. Uh, do you plan to put those uh, domains in some kind of the list? Yep. So are you on the wiki? No. And you went to the exam schedule? No, okay. Those are. So there is kind of a list, nested list of different topics. Um, we did cover quite a lot about AI because people were interested in AI, so they were writing about AI. Um, so there is kind of a, quite a number of different topics uh, within AI itself, some of, of which I kind of extrapolated into their own category, like about deep learning. I think you should kind of review a little bit of the understanding of deep learning itself, um, and then some of the research topics that we had. Um, so deep learning is kind of a self-explanatory, fake news also. There was one article about fake news, and I think someone wrote an essay. Um, how to use AI in games. Um, that is, well, it's kind of a cross between um, Christopher course and our course, right? So those of you who are taking both of the courses, you might have topic in about the use of AI in games is, itself. Um, what can we use games for, uh, AI for in games? How are the different strategies? Um, and then AI for playing games. So we did co cover uh, some research papers about the games being played by the AI and trying to either beat the human players or trying to investigate how the system can self-learn about the game playing. And there are two main uh, sub areas. So one is kind of a symbolic AI where you represent the state of the game in a kind of a symbolic fashion and you do some analysis and some machine learning on the symbolic representations or you just use raw pixels for example from the screen and you let the system to develop all the internal conceptualizations about what is happening on the screen to win the game for some of the video games so you don't provide kind of a knowledge or domain expertise for the game you just let the um, the system to, to teach itself, right? So if you compare Deep Blue, uh, the chess playing um, software, to a camera-based software which just watches people playing chess, right? And the, the, this software has no idea what chess is, right? It just observes people playing chess. Which one would be kind of easier to teach playing, playing chess? The first one, obviously, right? Nobody actually attempted to do that, the second one. But for some computer games, they did. They just used the raw pixels from the screen, and they say, ah, you know, you have to win. Uh, so there was a reinforcement learning to teach how to score more points and so on. Um, so what is the difference between reinforcement learning, unsupervised learning, and supervised learning? Um, 
So there are kind of uh, three main categories and, you know, what are the main differences? There was also an essay about evolutionary computing and some of the um, aspects of evolutionary computing. So, so check that one. Then we had kind of a few lectures and few write, writings on blockchain. Um, I think Marcus is also writing now the final essay about blockchain technology. So high level things, how it works, what it is and so on. And a little bit more technical details of how things are organized and how they work. Give examples. Um, so that might or might not be your strength. So refresh those as well. Then we have a general topics in mobile and cloud. Uh, we had a paper about the expanding the RAM. We had a paper about the um, uh, performance and battery consumption. Um, we had a paper about the platform's dominance and various models like open source and closed source uh, uh, software development. Uh, also about open and closed platforms themselves. Um, again, cross with, uh, with Christopher, like mobile gaming. Uh, I don't know whether you did cover it in his course, uh, but we, with Simon we always covered it in one or the other, right? So what is mobile gaming? What are the monetization uh, mechanisms? You know, because it's one of the kind of topics which kind of grew in importance over the last few years. Uh, and then using mobile as a sensory device for quantified self or kind of a, um, yeah, medical or e-health research. So one of the questions in the exam is, for example, what are the limitations of quantified self for actually doing research? What would you answer? What's the main limitation of the quantified self studies? Oh, come on. It's the real question which we asked last year and two years ago. And we will probably ask it again. So what limitations do you come to your mind? Self-selection bias. Yeah, that's, that's a limitation. Yeah? What else? So bias is one, but it's not the most important one. So bias is because you're doing study on yourself. So you say, you know, am I susceptible to a particular thing or do I have problems sleeping or something? And you already have a bias, you already have an answer. Right? So you will kind of find evidence to support whatever your, you think is true. Right? So people do that like they feel, okay, I, I have some skin disease. So they start Googling about it and then they got really convinced that they really have this disease. Right? Because they only cherry pick the evidence which supports the kind of the, the bias. Right? So being objective is quite hard. But what's the, the bigger problem? Yeah, you can do your own study on your own phone privately, no problem. How big is the sample size? One. <laughs> exactly. So if you have studies which have a sample size of one, how reliable are those? <laughs> well, for that one person, it could be very, very high. Exactly. So the problem is that the results are often not generalizable, right? So you may have some results, but you cannot really generalize it to say anything meaningful about any other person. Uh, but they are also kind of valuable for you, right? So if it turns out you have some unique condition, which only one in a million people has, and it's just you having it. Normal methodologies which will, will kind of not pick it up. 
because that would be part of the noise, part of the outliers, right? You can't really do large-scale studies to confirm it if it's just one in a million. But if you're doing quantified self on yourself, you may kind of detect that. Uh, on the other hand, being unable to generalize it, it's really hard to kind of confidently, to have confidence in something, right? Um, so for example, there were the, the, uh, a person did a study and he said that if he does 10 sit-ups before going to sleep or if he drinks a glass of milk with honey or if whatever reason, like he eats a spoon of sugar before going to sleep, he sleeps better, right? And he has data and on days where he did it, he slept statistically better than on days he didn't do that. Does it mean that doing sit-ups or eating sugar or drinking milk is actually helping with sleep or not? I have the person believes in it. Exactly. So it's a kind of um, placebo. placebo effect, right? So with the placebo effect, you can have data which supports whatever you came up with, but it just confirms the placebo effect. It doesn't actually confirm a relationship of milk or sugar or anything to your sleep, right? Uh, and distinguishing the placebo effect from the study is kind of hard. So there, you know, there are some challenges, right? So you have to be able to think and kind of explore the space a little bit, right? To kind of point out some of those elements, right? It might not be the most important, but at least it's in the pool, right? So if you don't know the answer, you have to kind of explore a little bit. All right, and then we had some papers about mixed reality, VR, AR sensing, tactile technology, wetness sensing, haptic. Um, so we had some essays on, on, in that area. Um, so, um, you know, how does uh, augmented reality work? What do you need for augmented reality to actually happen? What do you need? Yeah. Yeah, so you need some sort of device. What what examples can you give me? What can you HoloLens. use? You can use HoloLens, yeah. What does HoloLens use? Yeah, that's right. So it's kind of a projection technology which po provides you kind of a see-through with a projection, right? What are the devices can you use for augmented reality? Smartphones, yeah. So then what do you do? You do see-through, right? You have a camera and a screen, so you're looking at the world through a kind of a digital window, right? So you're not really seeing the real thing, you're kind of seeing the camera feed of the real thing, right? What else can you use? Uh, like car uh, screens can be used. That's right. You can use see-through dis displays with the like a windshield from the car or they have kind of a particular mirror uh, technology which pr provides you that as well. So you see the real world, but at the same time, it's something is projected on the on the screen on, uh, on the shoe. Like uh, Siri and uh, Alexa. Yeah. yeah. What else can you use? Have you heard about uh, retinal projectors? Yeah, some some use contact lenses, some don't. So you can have a projector which kind of shines the laser directly onto your retina, and then you see the normal world through your normal vision, but at the same time, you see stuff which is not real because it's projected onto your sensory input device. And this is pretty awesome. <laughs> right, so... Yeah, a little bit about technology, like what do we use for various things, what is the state of the art, what are the limitations, you know, VR, okay, we have headsets, so what are the limitations? Resolution? resolution? Yeah, which boils down to what? Why, why we have problem with resolution? We have, you know, 4K screens, I cannot distinguish pixels, so why there is a problem with when VR? That's right. So the distance of the actual display is so close and you have to use a lens, which also, um, you know, works as a magnifying glass to some extent, um, which provides you the visibility of the pixels. 
Okay, so then we have spent some time discussing the writing itself, and you gain some skills and some self-reflection about writing, right? So there might be some questions about what to do, what not to do, what are your strategies, and so on. Um, exam is kind of structured in such a way that some questions are recall questions, so we ask you to recall something that you've read, but most questions, like maybe 80%, are not recall questions, are like either a problem to kind of think about, or some scenario to think about, or you're kind of thinking about a particular domain, right? Um, so just in, in the exam, if you kind of can't recall quickly something, just try to think how can you construct something out of what you know, right? So you may not know the answer directly by recall, but you will be able to construct the answer by assembling what you already know from, from the building blocks, right? So, you know, about the writing, I don't think that we will be asking you to recall something. We will be more asking you about the strategies, asking about your reflections, right? Uh, and the same, the last point about the future. Um, so, like, an example question from... Um, I'm not sure if we used it last year, but like definitely two years ago with Simon was, uh, what do you think is the most important display technology in the recent years? So talk about displays, right? And what do you think is the most important? There is no correct answer, right? There is kind of a more in-depth or less in-depth answer, but there is no wrong or right answer. Uh, so one girl was saying uh, it's the e-ink technology because it allows us to have very low power screens on the back of the mobile phones or whatever, right? Or have the uh, uh, readers which are mounted in like as, as a dashboard or something that allows kind of uh, IoT devices to talk to it. Uh, so e-ink was like hot for her, right? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think so, uh, but you know, that's okay, it's kind of a, you can make a point about it. Could be the resolution, like growing resolution, which enables the VR or whatever, right? So you can think of something, right? Um, and the same about other topics, which are kind of either particular methods related or kind of broader social aspects. Um, so I don't think the exam is kind of hard. It's kind of more like a discussion, and um, there are different people approaching it differently. We never really had a kind of an oral exam review after the exams, so it's kind of, um, I, I can only tell you experiences from last year's, right? Not with you. So some students are quite quick. They kind of jump into the answer very quickly. Some take some time. Um, it doesn't matter that much. So if you need a bit of time to kind of think and prepare what you want to say, it doesn't matter if you're very quick or, or take time. What matters is that you uh, answer the question yourself. Like if you ask a question and then you say a sentence and then nothing happens and then we ask you again kind of a, a question and then you answer a sentence and nothing happens, then it's worse than if you answer three sentences yourself, right? Because then we don't need to pull the knowledge from you. You kind of, you are aware of the knowledge yourself and you can kind of give it, right? Um, so often students know something, but you have to ask for it like three, through three questions, which is okay because it demonstrates that you know it, but it's kind of better if you just say it yourself, right? So judging what to say and saying it helps. Um, of course, there is a balance because if you keep talking and keep saying things which are not related to the question, that's actually, you know, disadvantage, right? Um, so you have to find where to stop also. Uh, but saying more generally helps than saying less. Um, um, what else can I tell you about the oral exams? Yeah, just don't... Um, I don't know, like, don't treat it like, like an exam, just treat it more like a discussion, right? If you're not sure about something, say, I'm not sure about that, but I think this, right? Be open about what you think. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you had oral exams before, so, you know, it's not the first time you will have an oral exam, but... Um, 
in general, I think oral exams are, are good and they um, there is less uh, randomness in the oral exams. So in written exams, we always have students who are really good and they do poorly in written exams. Uh, in oral exams, if a good student has a bad day, it still shows that he or she is a good student because of those extra questions. So it's really hard to have a bad day and do really bad in the oral exam. But it's possible in the written exam to, to, to have that, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. You, you may have some um, ideas. Anyway, so after the exam, you should provide us feedback also. Um, we had a reference group. We need another reference group meeting, is it? do we? We, we need two, right? I think we were supposed to have two. Oh, yeah, one after the, the course as well, like when you already passed the exams, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, In serious games, we just add it together. Okay. So, should we have it? Okay. So, just let me check. Okay, so let's have one now, and then if you have some uh, ideas or comments uh, besides the one in the class, you can update the wiki. Um, today is April 30th. All right, so comments, suggestions, Complaints. Well, there's been some complaints going around about lack of communication when it comes to labs and science. Yep. You have to like get multiple reviewers and you really know what this means. So. Okay. Yeah, the lack of communication in particular because you wrote Christopher in on the lectures list. Yeah. And you never told him. No, I told him. He, he told us that he found out about it on the day he was supposed to have the lecture. No, we discussed that before. Yeah, but that's... Maybe he will help. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fine. Um, because I was surprised that he forgot as well. Um, so, communication and class timing topics. Yeah, that could have been done better. For sure. Um, I was under the impression that he remembered and that it will be fine. And I even asked him if it's okay because then he has back to back. He has the, the games, the mobile and the mobile after that. Um, and we had supposedly had Richard taking the mobile. So we discussed that before. Uh, but somehow, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he didn't realize it was when it was. Um, Yeah. So, uh, so I will say communication and class timing topics, and also substitute shoot lectures um, planning. Yeah. What else? Just a general uh, how this course is uh, fitted for those who don't take uh, elective AI games uh, in our courses. Yeah, it's, it, it looks uh, a little bit like an uh, like an extension, or or maybe some uh, some. Uh, um, how, how it fits in general for people who don't have this background that we are talking about something that I, I, I 
find it like um, for, uh, advanced for for um, and, and obvious for those who are taking those those other courses. So is it more so you 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 putting it more like a prerequisite uh, problem yeah, that some yeah. students are taking it without having those? Yes, yeah, because because I don't have the, the background in AI and blockchain in uh, in uh, in VR AR uh, uh, um, courses of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So so those are our. So 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 my my entire knowledge is mm -hmm. based on what stands on the on the. Uh, for example, on the topics on the list. Mm -hmm. So, just today you asked some few questions uh, that were that I didn't didn't I couldn't answer because I I didn't know the those uh, those uh, yeah. uh, those uh, what to say it? The words you are using mm -hmm. technology name technology. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of the prerequisite, something as to say that uh, it should be found out or. Yeah. That yeah. So that so what I said is scoping of the course, the course topics, and the pre the prerequisites are unclear. Or so from one hand they might be unclear. From the other they might be. Um, no, it's just, just like the the, the, the the criteria for the for passing the course. If mm -hmm. if, if uh, three or six main. Uh, uh, Three or six name uh, named uh, topics for the exam are kind of extending uh, knowledge if you are taking the extra courses. Yeah. Or, or uh, so, so, so. So I yeah I I think part of the problem is that we did have the games and the abstracts. It's it's, it's, it's too much combined and assuming that people are taking both courses. Yeah, that's right. But, but like me, I'm I taking only this one for this course. Yeah. So I'm receiving a lot of uh, information from that concern the other course. Yeah. And it's kind of like uh, assume that if it's not covered here, then it will be covered here. So you have the complete knowledge by taking a few courses. Yeah, that's because, right. So and as a separate course, it's difficult. And that's right. So that is a dilemma that we have because we don't want to repeat the some of the content, and we purposefully want to make courses complementary. That if you're taking both, you kind of get the best of the two courses or three courses. But at the same time, yeah, that leads to the problem you highlighted. That if you're not taking the courses, then you're missing part of the picture. So you only see um, some of it. And uh, and I. Uh, intentionally chose uh, to choose uh, three different uh, categories from for the essays, mm -hmm. but I see uh, two of them were put in the one category on the exam, mm -hmm. and the, and the third one is just a general wearable tech. Yeah. So it's kind of the all my semester work with my this that I, I was writing is kind of the fitting only only one part of the one point. Yeah, that, that yeah. I mean, don't don't get too hang out on the on the structure, right? Um, so the um, the relative weight for various topics is not necessarily based on the points that I've pointed out. It's more on the essays that you guys did and all on all, all the papers that we've yes. done, right? So. But, but then it leads to the to the to the, uh, to the question, uh, like. Uh, if you get a question of I um, about AI or VR or blockchain, mm. uh, is it possible to to answer it just by by taking the course, or you need this prerequisite? So this is the yeah. So some that yeah exactly. So some of the answers you will know just from the course, right? So what we covered in the course in the lectures, that's that's fine. You don't need to know more, but that's kind of like C, right? If you need to, if you want B or A, you have to go a little bit beyond. You have to like refer to some of the papers you've read or some kind of extra work that you've done. So the course provides you kind of the basis for passing, and that's all you need to pass with a comfortable C. Uh, but if you want to go beyond that, well, we expect you to work a little bit beyond that as well, right? Yeah. So and it, it shows in the answers as well, and it shows in the essays too, right? Uh, so, the, so the essays, the, the original articles on the on the topic list, yeah. and, the, and, the, and the lectures, uh, 
uh, they cover enough to, to pass the course. That's right, yeah. Not, not that you're expecting that somebody knows about those no. things that were covered in the other That's courses. right, and, and for some, I mean, mo for most of you, blockchain was new. Like, we, we don't have any courses which teach blockchain before that. So we don't expect you to come here with the prerequisite and, and that. So it's like we're starting from zero. Some things we kind of expect, like in t especially in our VR, AR games and so on, because we have dealt with it. Some of the cloud tag as well. We don't cover all the basics. We understand what you, you know, you understand that services and all those, uh, you know, cloud functions and things like this from the previous courses from bachelor degree. Uh, so we don't cover that, but we like if you don't know that, well, you're in trouble, right? Uh, but for for some, um, the course doesn't kind of puts a lot of prerequisites. That's why we don't have kind of prerequisites. But as you say, it still doesn't help because those students who have this extra knowledge, they, for them it's easier than for someone who comes and doesn't have it, right? Um, so. Uh, so the, 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 it's probably on um, planning the, the, the course uh, could be nice to have uh, to have kind of the nice to know nice mm -hmm. to know list at the beginning of the semester mm -hmm. uh, to, to have to, to, to give opportunity to to read about the things uh, uh, in addition to what's covered on the list because uh, maybe somebody would like to read a little bit more but it's not aware that this is this something is missing, so 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 giving this kind of the prerequisites or a nice to, nice to have, mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning of the of the of the uh, in the course description mm -hmm. could uh, could uh, could help to, to choose uh, our way the course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I said, nice to have background and prerequisites would help students to work in the course. Yes. Okay. Clearly written. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe it's, it's just a, it's just a my problem that I, I know I, uh, I'm not doing those courses, but maybe somebody else will uh, will be put in this, the same situation. Because I understand the guys are who are taking the, the, the game uh, bachelor and working with AI. And uh, what's in you working with the VR project? Yeah, yeah. But so it's, yeah, I have no not that much background in like cloud technologies. I know a little bit about it. Hmm. I never studied it. And yeah, same for blockchain. Exactly. So uh, like f for me, what. Like the, the course is for different students with different backgrounds. It's not like a specialization really like game serious games are, even though serious games is also a combination of different students because we have uh, people from security and so on taking the serious game, serious games course to learn about strategies and gamification and things like that, right? So they don't lack the, all the programming background or all the game programming background that game students have. So you have kind of at different levels with different interests and then what we try, we try to kind of uh, provide like a, a basis for you to specialize, right? Um, so in, in this course is the same, although this course is noticeably wider uh, because um, yeah, we do cover quite a number of topics which the serious games or web technology doesn't cover. So it kind of, it's like a bit of a it's thing. It's a nice binder. Yeah, it's, it's a, a binder. It's a nice binder to, to, to combine with other courses, so absolutely positive about it. Yeah. Okay, so what else? Uh, a clear schedule, perhaps, from the very beginning of the course. I think the deadlines were kind of falling in over time. Um, yep. And a working submission. Yeah. So we heard from uh, Christopher in games just now that you have a bachelor project that's sort of working it out for you. That's right. So we're testing it with the mobile course and it's almost working. So for next semester, I think it will be deployed and working well. It provides uh, ability to do reviews and to do the kind of uh, peer review system that we kind of used this semester. Uh, so it will make it kind of good.
But regardless of uh, regardless uh, the time schedule, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that the portfolio way of uh, working in this uh, course is very good, mm -hmm. uh, and it uh, the you feel like uh, you feel like you're getting better. Mm -hmm. It's uh, sufficient guidelines and reviews of what you've done, and it provides a nice base for to make uh, make a better uh, academic writing from from one to Mm -hmm. So this 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 part of the course is very very good. Yep. Thanks. Yeah, I I would uh, like to have like uh, have a uh, how do you get the feedback actually using the feedback on the same report and try to make it better. Mm -hmm. The feedback is really focused on the the first part of writing. Mm -hmm. like, Yeah. If it's uh, like a full process. Yeah, you could have improved it. Yeah. Feedback, yeah. And then get a new review. Yeah. And, uh, and maybe since it's, it's, it's just uh, when you're using feedback, you don't need that much time. Yeah. Maybe an extra week to uh, the first report or something just to have that. Mm -hmm. To work through the feedback. Yeah. yeah. Work through the feedback, use the feedback. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you, Christopher. Uh, the only, my only concern is that we have a kind of a tight time schedule, yeah. and 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 if if I make some if I want to make some improvements, that I will include them in a completely new topic. On this way, that I could refer to the to the what I was reading formally, uh, because you 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 you're talking about the form, how how it's formalized than uh, than writing it, right? Uh, yeah, but just like. Just to, it, one of the things in, in this event is to learn how to write reports mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I feel like it's a lot about learning like, the beginning part. And when you start, get the, re, re, the first review, then you should, like, after the, the first review, also do that second part. And if you're lacking, like, sources, lacking that, you also have to do that research and stuff like that. Something like that would okay. also help with the, the second part. Yeah, get get you better at actually using the uh, feedback. So, so working on a on a on a one week uh, kind of that written production and improve it incrementally. Yeah, I th in this course uh, or what we had like start one week before and then have. Like in the first uh, uh, first assignment, just have a, a one week like two improvements to get feedback on that. Yeah, I, I think you, you both have a very good point. So the process of having one long project is later. Like you will have the the master thesis project and advanced project work where you're working on one report and you get kind of feedback and you keep improving it and then it's just one deliverable. Uh, having the ability to kind of incorporate feedback into the, um, the essay, yeah, it's a good skill. Like you get feedback and then you work with it for an extra week. I think that might work. That might be a kind of a good idea, but being iterative is important, like being able to re repeat it a few times. So it cannot be just one because uh, you will have it later anyway. Yes. Um, so being kind of able to iterate it is important. And from one uh, point of view, if you get feedback, let's say uh, you lack some citations or something, right? Uh, OK, but it, it is also a feedback for your next essay, right? So it, it kind of, you can transfer it already to the new one. So that's what you were talking about, right? It's not like if someone says, oh, yeah, you didn't include this reference. It's not, OK, I include this reference, right? It's, but it's not about that. It's actually about including the key reference, right? So remembering it. From yeah. The, and you're writing from something new from the scratch. That's right. So you remember the rules. That's right. So the rules are kind of meta rules, which kind of apply to the next one as well, right? But also, when you actually fix the things, you can like remember it better. Yeah. yeah because you not only get feedback, you actually change. Exactly. Thing. Yeah. That's so right. You remember it. In that's right. Better, but then we're coming to the point that maybe it, it would be 
actually preferable to start writing earlier and get the guidelines and the feedback earlier in the course. So you have a little bit yeah. more time for writing. Yeah. Uh, because I, I felt like we, we lost a little bit of time mm -hmm. in the beginning, especially when the, the first essay and the first review were, okay, try what you can and what you think is a review. Mm -hmm. So this kind of, the, it's good to, 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 to evaluate or, uh, or self-evaluate on this part and confront it with the guidelines later. But it was like kind of a little bit of uh, loss of time. Mm -hmm. uh, we could we start with the guidelines and improve writing for a little bit longer period. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it could be a, uh, and, uh, could those additional two or three weeks, for example, could be used to to, to include the, the what uh, Christopher proposed that instead of getting a new new essay on a week, you will get a new essay on two weeks, and the next week you get the improvement for the, for the, the previous one. So mm -hmm. it's keep the, the number of uh, essays, and we just spread it a little bit longer for us to have a room for improvements yeah. and resubmitting, or just just for for, for individual purpose. Yeah. So starting earlier and having a bit more time. Um, because those first essays were anyway were not that very very important as the you, you, you will read it later, but it's not like this is the this is maybe um, what you can from before yeah. to, to build on. So the writing can start early because we can have those lectures anyway. Mm -hmm. So we can start with the time allocated for writing. But while you're writing, we can have lectures instead of doing the lectures first and then yeah. trying to As do the have, writing. Yeah. Because yeah, no, you, you do research and then get the knowledge when you get the topic. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so anyway, it, it doesn't correlate, correlate with, the, with the lectures anyway. Mm -hmm. No conflict, yeah. So this, this, is, this could be completely parallel uh, activity. activity, yeah, exactly. So we can start early on, saying, yes. oh yeah, pick some topics, do something, then have feedback, then improve on it, and, and so on, and do those three iterations early on, yeah. Yep, sounds good. And it will, will be a, such, a, such a eventual, uh, eventually there would, it would not be the problems with the time schedule before the exam, yeah. because we will probably would finish earlier yep. with the good reviews yep. and good writing. Yeah. Regardless when the when the time of exam will be, mm -hmm. uh, am I wrong that uh, that the, the semester score uh, uh, ends like in May or something? It's like the mid the middle of the May. The semester teaching finishes uh, this week. This week, already. this week is the last week of teaching. Okay, yeah. uh, I thought it was a little bit longer. And then the exams start 5th of May and go until 28th, okay. I think, or 29th. Yeah. We have exam 11th, really. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, it's... I thought it was like starting in the middle of the May and, 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 the, and from till the, until the middle of the June, but... Yeah. Uh, we have to do some uh, exam this week, like... Uh, Presentation. Yeah. Uh, integration for them. Is that a presentation? I thought it was an oral exam. It was an oral exam, and, and uh, we're told, talking about uh, getting an extra presentation before, so they can see the product. Uh, but this is not this is because there was no no more uh, meetings. Yeah. So uh, that's anyway. Can be decided. What is that? I don't. I don't have anything to see. Yes, it. What for that day? Maybe they don't have it, maybe they'll forget about it. Okay, so, so I um, I saved the notes. If you can check it out and add or edit uh, the way you feel, uh, that would be great. Um, so we will finish early, so I will not have a break. Uh, and we will go for another 15 minutes or 20 minutes, and then we will stop. Um, so what I would like to talk today about is, um, yes, I have the, uh, 
mm, yeah so that's the uh, group meeting notes and then I've updated the wiki I've added the deadline for the self uh, review for the final essay I showed the topics for the exam um, by the way if like you Tomasz, if you feel some of the things are missing from the exam uh, ballot points that it's bundled up too much in one point you can expand it so you can add the ballot points the way you no, feel I, I was just i was doing like some kind of the business research on the ecosystem I yeah was doing hardware and i was doing some uh, prototypes of the wearables yeah and now i feel like they are all in the this mobile and wear dog tech mm. memory limitation and platform dominance this yeah the, all three are somehow put in there but it's okay i just uh, read the, the other articles uh, Myself, yeah, something, something. It's, it's just right. that I was a little bit more explicit about the AI and the blockchain, but the AI and the blockchain are like, uh, you know, same weight with each other. And then the mobile wearable is like slightly bigger, fatter, even though in the points it doesn't show it's the, the opposite. Uh, so content wise, we spend more time on the third big bullet point than on the other ones. Uh, yeah, AI is probably bigger than blockchain. So in terms of weight, I would say number three, number four and one, and then number two, right? Uh, kind of a content-wise heavy, yeah. Okay, um, so what we want, so what I want you to tell me is, uh, why do we have open source? Sources to, to go, although it's a, a wrong approach. But I remember I somebody is choosing uh, open uh, open source to to get rid of the problems mm -hmm. uh, that they don't have the resource for. And I'm thinking, of, okay, it will be cheaper. It's not, but uh, okay. But uh, uh, cheaper. You could try yeah, philosophical. to philosophical. Sorry? Philosophical reason. Yeah. Could be some kind of the marketing uh, uh, brand uh, brand making. Yes, we are open source. It's kind of the Kind of the attitude, uh, programmer's attitude aspect. So marketing, maybe. But those are kind of um, psychological. Yeah, they are not kind of real. Uh, so cooperation, standardization. So yeah, that's a good one. So. Um, if you imagine that we don't have open source, imagine the world where all software is commercial software and there is no open source software. How that world would be different to the one with open source? Have to make everything from scratch? Or What's the story? Pay somebody to... Probably economical chain uh, would be, and, and accounting, accounting would be a little bit more part of the real world. Like I have to pay uh, 1.29% uh, over the unit, unit till, uh, till uh, somebody 
tour of uh, some bibliotech, the library or uh, IRC would be way off. <laughs> Lots of money for uh, for lawyers about the uh, usage rights and uh, probably how how much how much of the work is redone or of legal rights and and argues. So in general, it looks kind of uh, harder, right? Oh. Things you have to either buy something, or if it doesn't do what you really need, you have to do it from scratch, uh, or buy some libraries maybe. But that it is hard. Uh, piracy is up, of course. Uh, money are spent on legal things of people fighting for who owns what. So it, it is kind of uh, you know the term rent seeking behavior or rent seeking. It's uh, people try to monetize on something that they own without doing anything, right? So you have, you know, you bought a house and just by owning the house you want to now get salary, right? So you want the rent, you want to a tenant to pay you a rent. But you're not really doing much anymore, like you just invested into the house. It's not like a labor that you're doing every month to get paid for. Uh, yes, maybe you have to invest and like upgraded or uh, renew, renovated or whatever, sure, uh, but this kind of rent-seeking behavior is usually something that you benefit without actively contributing towards, right? So here is the same, like we have something that we own, Oracle says we own Java, now everybody else will pay us licenses, right, because we own it. We don't necessarily make it better, it's this open source community which makes it better and we just take it from them. But we want we are the kind of a gatekeeper. We keep the, the lock on it, right? So um, so rent seeking um, rent seeking and kind of a gatekeeping gatekeeping is high. And um, uh, you talked about it a little bit in the one of the essays, right? Um, so. We have open source, and open source changed some of the dynamics. So, for one thing, it says you can't really do rent seeking anymore because it's out there, anybody can use it. Like, it's a house which anybody can move in and live in. Right? It's nobody's house. Like, Linux, you can take Linux and use it. Um, um, don't agree. It depends on the, the second of the gatekeeping. On how, how, how are you, how, how this that you own? You are you are uh, you are legal or or able to 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 keep close to to yeah that's right so we, we do have different open source licenses right so open source doesn't necessarily mean something is free yes. and open source doesn't necessarily means you can use it legally right um, so it depends but let's say um, we we kind of um, Constraint. So let's say this is the kind of a open source in general. So we can, for example, say GPL or MIT uh, or Apache Apache license. We kind of just say about this universe. Then suddenly you don't have rent seeking, right? Um, but there are models where you have most of it open source, but some things are kind of locked and you still do this rent seeking or gatekeeping behavior, right? Some big projects are for. Um, Android is open source. Yeah, for example, Android. Uh, Android is not entirely open source. There are some parts of Android which kind of are locked, right? Uh, and only the big players can kind of use it. Most of it you can do, uh, but not everything. And, and Google tries to keep a lock on some things. So, for, for example, a Gmail app or a Play Store are not open sourced. They are part of their own kind of. Um, but, they, but, but they make money on different things than the, than the, than the software. Yeah, this that's is, right. This is the different business model. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, um, 
Standardization is a big one because without open source, a lot of things kind of are competing with each other, right? Uh, with open source, we try to unify it so then more people can contribute. So we have kind of platforms where people can kind of easily contribute, so we don't want to constrain it too much. We often have projects which are composed of multiple programming languages because, you know, it makes sense to attract more people in. With commercial software, yeah, it's not the case. They try to limit. They try to say, you should use our programming language because we want to limit the community. We want to limit you to know only about us. You don't, we don't want you to be playing with some other kids. Uh, all right, so what are the problems with open source? It depends um, on how engaged are those those programmers who you are a part of the program. So this 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 really is not something you can predict. True, but imagine so if, if I have uh, an idea for a software, let's say um, I don't know, um, I develop a game as a commercial entity, closed source. Right, and the game turned out not to be that great. Like it didn't make a lot of sales. Right, and I was kind of um, I published it, and it didn't earn a lot of money. And then I I decided not to put more development effort into it. So in time, it, it kind of died. Right, there is no source code for it. There is nothing people can maintain and can do. Right, now imagine that I'm a developer. I develop an open source game which I published, I didn't much earn much money on it, but it's an open source project and people can take it up. They can continue developing it. They can continue modding it. They can continue doing stuff with it. And suddenly I'm not interested in it anymore. I don't put any development effort into it, but the product itself continues to live because there is interest. There is, uh, you know, people can continue to put effort into it, even though I'm not, right? So if Linux, at some point says, uh, screw it, I'm not working on Linux anymore. Will Linux die? I don't think so. I think there will be new people who will be contributing to it, managing it, and it will kind of continue to, to live, right? Um, so open source allows to, um, to remove the company or the person responsible for the life of something from it so then it can kind of live on its own different people can come in into the community and maintain the software right we have that with kind of a lot of open source projects which were started by one person or one team and it actually continued with another who was changing but there are also ones on the, uh, like a big uh, open source project like uh, netbeans for example yeah it was like um, a huge eid uh, from uh, Oracle that took over and put a lot of efforts that, uh, that the workers at the Oracle were encouraged to, to work to maintain on it. And yeah. work on it. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know where is it now. Is it dead completely or or abandoned? I haven't heard anything about it that means uh, That's for right. some time. So this is this is not always uh, and it's quite a lot of abandoned projects around. So why open source project die? Do people stop uh, being interesting in it? Something better comes along. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's the that's uh, that's uh, that's the point. So, variety uh, uh, variety of uh, software is uh, definitely bigger with the open source because you 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 say people abandon it, right? So people, um, I I kind of lost the space. Uh, abandon it is the symptom of that people have a limited amount of time to spend on something. If I can spend my time on this, but there is something better, I will spend my time on something better, right? Um, so I don't think people abandon good open source projects because they just abandon good open source projects. And I also don't think good open source projects just die. Uh, I think they die for a reason. And one reason is that there is something better, right? Why NetBeans died? Well, maybe people don't use NetBeans that much. Maybe other uh, IDEs are better, right? So people... Yeah, they are. Yeah, exactly. 
maybe some projects get kind of abandoned because they get so complex that it's really hard for newcomers to contribute. So then the newcomers want to contribute to something which is easier and simpler to contribute. Uh, some projects, um, I don't know, they may die because of um, some legal issues or some, I don't know, conflicts within the community itself. The community cannot agree what the next iteration should be, what the next feature set should be. So there, there, there might be the, you know, various reasons, right? Um, almost none of them are economical. Like, it doesn't matter how much money the project brings for it to either live or die. Th those are more on the commercial side of things, right? Uh, if the commercial software is profitable, then the company puts effort and develops it. If the product becomes less profitable, there is less money to promote it and to push through it. And if the product becomes unprofitable, then it means it, it stops existing in the commercial sense, right? Um, so open source also allows us to have software which doesn't necessarily in itself is profitable. With the commercial model, it would be really hard to have software which is beneficial for users but not really profitable, right? Uh, so, so, the, so, so you mean that the, the, the main reason for open source is to give the, the, the freedom of choice to the community of developers which products are worth keeping alive? It kind of democratizes the space, right? Mm -hmm. The space which was kind of managed by the money and by gatekeepers suddenly is kind of managed by contributors, by people themselves. So it kind of democratized the software to a point where you know, it's up to us, developers, to decide what next we want to work on, what we want to create, what we need for our own work, right? There is a lot of open source projects which are kind of tooling for developers. That's the kind of a sweet spot, right? A lot of developers need editors, a lot of developers need compilers, a lot of developers need programming languages. All those are kind of almost always open source because there is a lot of people contributing, right? Um, there are some projects now which are kind of contributing just normal people as open source as well. Um, with, with this model, something that is not profitable would be really hard to exist. With this model, it, it, it does, right? Um, so what you need for an open source project to exist? It has to be an idea or a need for a, for a software. Yeah, so there needs to be a need. That's for sure. What else? It needs to be, it needs to strive to at least be better than the alternatives that already exist. It needs to be uh -huh. because it's just yeah. a copy of what's already here. Yeah, so. Okay, so let's say a good solution is possible, right? If there is a need and a good solution is not possible, that will not be. I, I would say something something alternative to the need because it's not. I don't think that that only people that need the product will will contribute to it. So 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 it's not the it's not the only okay. I need some kind of the uh, shareware or something like this because it will help my development work. No, I don't need it. I I, I have a license or something on the on the on the on the on the company computer. I don't need this one. No. But I would contribute to it of some other reasons, like personal reasons. So it has to be kind of attractive in many aspects, uh, and it's a quite a big bucket because it could be attractive because it's. It's it's a good solution. It's attractive because uh, because I would feel nice to that I uh, contributed. So it has to have something that attracts the the the, the programmers that doesn't doesn't need the software themselves. Right. So someone wants to develop it. That someone who wants to develop it doesn't have to be the same group of people who need the software. Yes. Or it could be, right? So sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, right? Um, sometimes people who are developing it are also using it, 
but it doesn't have to be. So we have a concept of developers, and here we have a concept of users, right? Yes. So users don't have to be uh, developers. So user doesn't have to be a developer. Often it is for the successful open source project that's, that's aligned, but if it isn't, then why would someone why would someone develop for a user if they are not the user? And you say, well, they might have reasons. They might have philosophical reasons, they might have moral reasons, um, they might have standardization reasons, um, they might be paid to do that, economical reasons. Yeah, right? with Oracle. That's what happened with Oracle. Um, right, so, um, what? Right, so it could be it could be like that. This is too 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 big project for a single person to to to, to bear, and it will have to at some point share the burden of of uh, of creating it. Yeah. So what what prevents an open source project to exist? So so here we we specified what needs to happen. So let's say we do have users. There is a kind of a someone who would use it. Uh, there are some developers who would potentially develop it. Uh, the, the solution is possible. So, what may prevent the project to exist? We we kind of mentioned that already. One one of the reasons. One of the reasons is um, inner conflict um, within the community. So, let's say there is a project. The users are there, the community is there, the developers are there, and then they cannot agree what to do, like what the next feature set should be. And they argue with each other, and they kind of fight, and they split, and there is now two open source projects, and they split again, and then it goes to hell, right? So that, that's one possible scenario to prevent it to work. What, what other? But this is, this is huh? legal. legal, excellent. Legal. Uh, it might be illegal to, to do that, right? Uh, so then law enforcement and the legal system prevents something to, to exist, right? Or it doesn't. Or it doesn't, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you want to say? Uh, no, I was just uh, thinking about this uh, inner conflict, but it's kind of the, when you have this distribute, distributed uh, uh, decision making mm -hmm. in the community, mm -hmm. so it is, it is not necessarily about the development, but in general it's difficult to come to the conclusion of what's the, what's the roadmap. Yeah, so governance, let's say. Mm -hmm. So governance of the project might not be ideal, right? For the well, um, performing open source projects, the governments usually is well organized, well performed, or you have a dictatorship which everybody loves, uh, and then it sort of works, right? It's a little bit similar to you know political systems. Some communities like to be democratic and they want to have everybody the same rights. Some communities say, no, oh, fine, having a king is fine. Like you know, we love the king. Um, so. Okay, so um, to address those two issues, let's say um, let's say something in one country is illegal, but in another country is fine, right? Uh, so, for example, maybe um, without calling names, maybe Russia and China would say we don't want any. Um, uh, encryption-based communicators, because then we cannot listen to what people are talking about, right? Uh, and then there is a large community of open source developers saying, well, we would really like to have open source uh, secure privacy-aware communicators in Russia and China, right? Uh, but they cannot do that because then they would be doing something illegal, right? Um, with governments and kind of a conflict resolution, a lot of time it's all about ego and uh, about you know names and about who takes credit for something, right? Could be, could could be something else. Um, but, but then it's something something else that's in the picture than 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 uh, software engineering it's, uh, itself. Then it's 
the, the, the person who's, or the community who starts the project with a clear vision, where are we going? Yeah. So uh, this kind of the uh, ownership of the project, if it's, if it's maintained and clear, then uh, it's crucial for a, for a open source project to succeed. Yeah. Because people go, go in and out uh, during the, the lifetime of the, but they all have to feel that they own and contribute at some point. So this kind of binding. Ownership is a kind of a double-edged sword. It sometimes helps to maintain and to uh, provide resources for the project, but sometimes it prevents something to happen, right? So some, for example, you know, some project is owned by Google. It's open source project, but it's owned by Google. Will Microsoft and Oracle contribute to that project with their resources? No, they probably won't, right? But if something is in public domain, uh, it's not owned by anybody, then it's easier and more free to contribute to it, right? Yes, but, but it, you can see it uh, on, the, uh, on the same situation that is named with the Microsoft and Google. If it's yeah. something in the public domain that could compete with Google, then the Microsoft will invest in it. <laughs> well, of course. Yeah, so, so the, the, this, this is... <laughs> This also could work this way. I know, but if you compare those two models. Yes, yes, yes. Right. I was uh, more, more, uh, more thinking about the, 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 the feeling of contribution uh, than ownership, like that I don't own this, this uh, but more than ever, I feel contributing and responsible and uh, for, the, for this that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm working on. Mm. More than I, okay, I put my function in it, so I, now I own 1% uh, of this source code. It, it, not, not that kind of ownership, more like this that feeling of being, feeling, of feeling, feeling of ownership, of being part of it. Uh, yeah, so this, 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 this ownership. So more uh, like belonging. Yeah. Belonging, yes. yes that's, maybe. that's probably not a word, right? Yes. Community belonging. So you belong to that community. Yes. You feel kind of a part of the community. Oh, oh it's, yeah. my, it's my child that's growing up here. Maybe I will stick in on on five years and see uh, what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, but then again, like let's say you have uh, this sense of belonging here, um, and everybody knows Thomas is kind of part of this community, and, and he was developing this child, right? And then there is a alternative solution which might objectively be better. How easy would it be for you to jump the ship? Uh, probably not. Probably not, in, probably impossible, right? As um, well, uh, I've, so, seen, uh, I've seen quite a lot of open source projects that were one or two men only. Yeah, that's right. So it's okay, uh, but being able to kind of say, oh, I want to contribute to the better one, that should be easy, right? Mm -hmm. And then the belonging and ownership kind of Yes, it's a positive thing, but also it is a negative thing in a sense of the like, uh, overall, let's say, performance of the of the system. <laughs> yeah, but they also it could keep a project alive uh, and sure. preventing from abandoning project because if everybody doesn't feel this belonging to your project, yeah. then we'll jump and try another solution for a half year right. before they are coming maybe back or not. That's right. And after yes. half year, maybe you did the project. So died. some form of lock-in is necessary. Right. Yes. Uh, some some form of um, being um, bound to that project for some time at least is necessary. Otherwise, you know, only very small things would be possible, right? But then, so, well, then all of this relation goes more on the personal and attitude than kind of the the, the contract uh, economical mm -hmm. uh, matters. Yeah. So this is more like this. This, as you said, community belonging personal aspects that, that play a role about this in, in this not not necessarily the the reasonable reasons. Right. So a final question and then we go. So to have the open source model working, the developers have to develop this. Um, and by doing that they spend time. So some of it do it as a hobby. Most of the open source is actually done like in the evenings by developers who work for other companies. Sometimes they are paid to do that. Uh, 
but it's kind of hard to be uh, developing software for open source project and getting normal salary. Like you can do it with Mozilla and you can do it with some of the big companies uh, where you're working on open source and being paid for it. But most contributors are kind of enthusiasts and they are hobbyists and they are not paid for it, right? So would it be possible to have a model where uh, people can contribute to open source and kind of get financially reimbursed for it based on the benefits that the kind of a community has. So, so this is a software, um, kind of uh, working on the software. Um, the software benefits somebody, somebody somehow puts value into what they value are getting from the software in such a way that the developers actually get paid. So it's kind of a self um, reinforcing situation where software, let's say we have a game, which is an open source game, the players who like the game donate or contribute or pay for it, and then the money gets kind of provided into the development of the game. Same as with the commercial software, because you know, a commercial company kind of puts money in, develops something, and then charges for users to use it, right? And then pays the developers. So it's kind of the same, but without the company. So normally this is done by some sort of a company which kind of maintains the cycle, and if that cycle breaks down, if there is inefficiency, like users don't want to use it, don't want to pay, well, then they kind of change it, they control it, they adjust it, right? Uh, but without this company, is it possible for the open source to work with kind of a cycle like that? I think yes. it's possible. A combination of Patreon and the code or something like that, where people could post their GitHub basically in the form of Patreon, and yep. you could post like pages with issues, mm -hmm. and people could fill out those issues, work out the, the problem, the issue, solve it, yep. and then post a so the solution. And if it got accepted by the community, the person would get paid. Like that. So keep, keeping keeping kind of the the the, the account for the total and splitting it to the people who is solving the problems. Yeah, yeah. or it or it it's, uh, it could be kind of the some like an annual bonus, like that. Okay, 2018 that uh, the application made so much profit, mm -hmm. and then there are some kind of the elders to 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 decide it, what what kind of contribution because. Because if somebody is serving the problem, but it's only wrapping something else, some somebody else work, mm -hmm. then this yeah. this could be this could be caught in this kind of the annual bonus. And then maybe a nice Christmas uh, gift. Uh, okay, this year we made a lot of money on the project, so here is your check. Now this year it was bad year. Nobody is getting paid. But this this kind of the attitude that you're not expecting salary, but mm -hmm. you still can get a bonus, bonus if, if the, the entire community make a good job. Yeah. Well, yeah. So but, 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 the but, I recommend it would kind of work possibly, given how a lot of people these days have Patreon and so maybe support some people there. But Patreon is kind of based on uh, donations, right? Yeah, but the, the point would be that people would post issues that they want X problem to be solved, and then other people could uh, send money onto that issue. So if the issue gets solved by someone, mm -hmm. then if say a hundred people donate ten dollars each to this issue, then the person that solves this issue gets a thousand dollars minus the fees. Mm -hmm. But the yeah, the problem with that is like the the cheating. So yeah. somebody has to have some sort of control over it. Yeah, that it would have to be more developed. There has to be like kind of like somebody has their own ownership over some project. Mm -hmm. Because you can't you can't have like a some kind of voting system mm -hmm. like with, to like secure the integrity. It, it sort of needs some kind of control mechanism, mm -hmm. probably from some someone kind of leadership. The, well, uh, it it would require work and possibly some administration. Maybe someone like Linux, who works with Linux, he could be the one that accepts these issues and hands out the issue money, for example. Well, it it could it could it could it could 
end up with kind of the race condition to the nice tickets to uh, uh, easy to do and, and do benefits and competing instead of cooperating. Mm. So yeah. I, 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 I would, I would, I would, well, I don't think it's possible in some solution while stopping somebody else from just, well, people who are in the people could take yeah. ownership of an issue mm -hmm. for a given period of time where they say, I will work on this. Yeah. And then you just stop being everybody else. So, yeah. I'd like the competitive nature of this system alone, you just ask him for trouble. Um, yeah. Yeah, unless you have like kind of a, uh, governing body. So mm -hmm. they in this case, you could pay the she, for example, and they they see look at all the solutions mm -hmm. and pick the best one. Yeah, that that one gets the money. Yeah. that can work. Mm -hmm. Well, and you you could pay a sort of fee, like say if you had a thousand dollar fine for the issue, you could pay fifty dollars and say, okay, you have got a week. If you don't solve it within a week, you lose the. Money. Yeah, but then you pay. People have to pay. To, 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 to try it's like right. buying a, a lottery. Well, it would, it, would, it, it would obviously depend on how much money is in the issue. If it's, the issue isn't worth much, then the fee would be big. But and what would happen if somebody just bought up every issue? Well, if they don't solve it within a week, then the issue gets reopened for other people to do, and they lost the money on the issue. And, and then it, it's just slow settling down. Yeah, but it, it slows and also the quality may go down because yeah. if I am the mono, monopoly on this yeah. particular issue, I can do a crappy job. But if I'm just 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 to make quality, it done, yeah, that's right. Make, and because yeah. he's gonna he's gonna pay for bug fixing. Yeah, if I abandon the project, yeah, because you can make it work. So it would have to be some, I agree, probably some competitive nature would be benefiting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the, the point is that it's possible but it would change how the entire field works because right now it's more cooperative everyone works together to solve the problem and when you introduce money into the equation then people get competitive well it's, currently it also is a bit competitive like if there is yeah an it's, open it's source, my line in the source code exactly. not yours well, yeah. yes. the, the difference now is that it's sort of pain competitiveness uh, and about getting credit for your work, yeah, but it's also you produce money, then it starts to become your livelihood. Yeah. And I think it, it, you can have like a similar precise uh, version that you both don't need the best solution or something like that. Mm. Yeah. That somebody has to like set that up. Yeah. And that uh, the person that sets up both has to be trusted. That's right. So you, you have to have a trusted party on the board. Yeah. But the, you can like have the whole, that everybody can do something and you, you probably also need some kind of, uh, yeah, some kind of way of taking out that or. So if, if the party is trusted but the process is very transparent, yeah. then the trusted party cannot really cheat because all the cheating would be kind of visible. Yeah. Then it might work, right? Yeah. Well, then, then, it, then it would uh, it turns out that it's uh, easier, probably, and, and better model to to keep this kind of the company that's paying for uh, for uh, for being in a, right. as part of the open source project like the Oracle did, because they pay their own workers and they could additionally pay somebody else for solving issues that they weren't going to have time to do in the project. So this this would be like this those tickets are, are nice uh, nice way but then then you have this kind of the it's better to have this organization I think outside of the project like a company that's that's kind of uh, ordering the or, or managing and keeping the the profits mm. and paying from the from what they get what they think to the to the to the workers so it it could be like this okay we have a good project anybody wants to make money on it. Okay, you are making money on it and pay us for, for, for working on it. Mm, yeah. So this, this this could be probably a, a kind of a mixed solution between the, the, the completely open source and the completely, completely commercial. commercial. Yeah. All right, so let's close. I think the final answer is it's possible. Yeah. Good. <laughs>